up and down, left and right, and bumping through the skies was so common in early flight that the first women Boeing hired as flight attendants were nurses to care for queasy passengers. In the 1930s, Boeing saw an opportunity in all that air sickness. Back then, planes could only fly as high as the air was breathable. That often meant a jarring ride through rough turbulence. At the same time, the company faced the threat of the legendary Douglas DC-3, which was dominating the market. The solution to both challenges would be a pressurized cabin that allowed planes to fly higher over the roughest air, something even the mighty Douglas DC-3 couldn't do. Others had experimented with pressurization, but Boeing found a way to make it work even if the company, too short on cash to buy a real pressure chamber, had to rig up this one using a 55-gallon drum. The company still has the patent filing for the resulting pressure control system, which included key developments like the cabin pressure regulator. The result? The first commercial airplane with a pressurized cabin, the Boeing 307. Called the Stratoliner, it delivered a comfortable ride unlike any other, and Pan Am, TWA, and Howard Hughes stepped up to buy them. But for all its ability to fly above the weather, the Stratoliner couldn't avoid the raging storm of World War II, and only 10 were built before Boeing shifted fully to war production. Still, the 307 paved the way for the comfortable high-flying jets Boeing is building today and designing for tomorrow.